When should you order blood cultures? Why? How should you go about it? And how should you interpret them? Let's dive right in. Blood cultures are the most important microbiological test in medicine. If your patient has bacteria or fungi in their bloodstream, you know that they are definitely seriously ill. With that in mind, let's answer the first question. When should you order blood cultures? A good rule of thumb is, if your patient has an infection that is severe enough to warrant hospitalization or IV antibiotics, you should certainly draw blood cultures. Obviously, if you suspect sepsis or septic shock, they are 100% essential. Now, how do you suspect and diagnose sepsis? This is a topic for a separate video, but suffice to say that sepsis is a severe infection with profound systemic effects. Most patients with sepsis will have a fever or they will have abnormally low body temperature and they will also show signs of organ dysfunction such as respiratory failure, tachycardia, hypotension or altered mentation. Essentially, this is how you suspect sepsis. You see signs of systemic inflammation like first and foremost fever and you see signs of organ dysfunction. The most common sources of sepsis are pneumonia, UTIs and skin and soft tissue infections. So. If your patient with any of these conditions looks severely ill, again, if they are showing signs of organ dysfunction, you should take blood cultures because you suspect sepsis. Finally, you should also take blood cultures when you encounter a patient with a fever of unknown origin. You are always looking for bacteremia. Now, why are blood cultures so important? For many everyday infections like bacterial pneumonia, cellulitis or intra-abdominal infections, there are no reliable and widely available microbiological tests that would allow you to isolate the pathogen causing them. For pneumonia, you might think of sputum cultures, but many patients don't produce sputum, and even if they do, it's difficult to obtain a high-quality sample. For skin and soft tissue infections and many other infections, it's even worse. So, your best bet is blood cultures. If an infection is severe enough, there is a significant chance that bacteria will enter the bloodstream and if we can detect them there, we will know exactly what they are susceptible to and we can use targeted therapy. Even if our initial empiric regimen was off target, now we can adjust it precisely. Also, the species of bacteria you isolate can tell you a lot about your patient's diagnosis and the severity of illness. In situations where you weren't sure of the source of sepsis initially, the bacterial species can point you in the right direction. If you've seen my video on the most important bacteria in medicine, I'm sure you know what I mean. For example, E. coli in the bloodstream usually means a urinary tract infection or some sort of intra-abdominal infection. Streptococcus pneumoniae should make you recheck for pneumonia or even bacterial meningitis depending on symptoms. Lastly, the presence of bacteria alerts you to possible complications. For example, Staphylococcus aureus is a common cause of cellulitis, we all know that. But if your patient with cellulitis also has staphylococcal bacteremia, so staphylococci in the bloodstream, you should look for complications like endocarditis, a deep abscess or osteomyelitis. Conditions that will require a longer course of antibiotics and possibly surgery. So, this will significantly alter your treatment plan. Now, how do you draw blood cultures? Guidelines recommend that in adults, you should draw two sets from two separate venipuncture sites. A set means two bottles, one aerobic and one anaerobic. So, four bottles in total, at the very least. So, why do we do that? Reason number one sensitivity. The more blood you take, the more likely you are to detect the pathogen. Bacteremia is usually intermittent, so a batch of bacteria passes through, then nothing, then another batch, and so on. Greater volume increases your chances of catching bacteria. Now, in very young children, especially newborns, obviously you will take less blood, only a few milliliters, and you will only take aerobic cultures, because, of course, the total blood volume in children is much smaller than in adults. The bacterial concentration in children is usually much higher than in adults and it's easier to detect. And finally, anaerobic bacteria are extremely rare in this age group. It's almost always aerobic bacteria that cause bacteremia and sepsis in children. So, this is why you only take aerobic blood cultures and you use a smaller volume in young children. Still, even with children, Follow weight-based volume recommendations. More volume still means 
better sensitivity. Reason number two for at least two sets of blood cultures in adults, interpretation. With most bacteria, interpretation is simple. Any isolation from any bottle means real bacteremia. So you isolate Staphylococcus aureus, this is Staphylococcal sepsis. You isolate E. coli, this is definitely E. coli sepsis, bacteremia. But with a few bacteria, especially skin flora like Staphylococcus epidermidis and other coagulase negative Staphylococci, it's a little bit trickier. These organisms are common contaminants of blood cultures, which makes sense, doesn't it? When you insert a needle to draw a blood sample, the needle has to pass through the skin and if the skin hasn't been disinfected properly, the bacteria from the surface of the skin will end up in the sample. So, if you draw from only one site and get coagulase negative staphylococci, you can be sure if this is mere contamination or true bacteremia. But if the same organism grows from separate blood cultures from two separate sites, it's much more likely to be real. Also, just like with any other microbiological test or any test in medicine for that matter, context matters. Coagulase negative staphylococci almost exclusively cause hospital acquired infections, particularly after surgery or involving prosthetic material like joints, valves, pacemaker leads. So if your patient had such a procedure recently, finding coagulase negative staphylococci in their bloodstream might reflect a true infection. But if your patient is a young athlete with uh, pneumonia, coagulase negative staphylococcus is almost certainly a contaminant. In summary, any patient sick enough to need hospitalization or IV antibiotics should have blood cultures drawn. In adults, at least two sets from two separate properly disinfected venipuncture sites. More volume equals higher sensitivity. Multiple sites help distinguish contamination from true bacteremia. I cover other microbiological tests and much more in my courses on antibiotics in clinical practice. Take a look at the free demo for essential basics that every clinician should know and explore the full topics on my website. I am confident you will find something useful. Take care.